Hi, uh, it's Inspector Mark. Uh, I'm in the basement of a 1983 home, uh, currently unoccupied. Uh, my client is not here. Um, the reason I've uh, brought you here is uh, it's a very interesting home in the fact that it's a typical home that usually is very dry. Uh, this house has some excellent features that even new homes don't have to keep it dry. Uh, one of them being uh, the weeping tile system for this home is gravity drained which means there's no sump pump there's no sump chamber so in a home like this uh, the weeping tile is simply fed downhill uh, into the uh, sewer system and so it works invisibly you're not relying on a pump you're not relying on power uh, if you unplug a sump it can flood your basement if the pump quits your basement can flood if the float switch quits working on the sump pump, uh, your basement can flood. But in these homes, uh, none of that applies. The second reason these homes are usually extremely dry is uh, this home in particular has all the roof water uh, going into uh, collector pipes on the outside of the house. All the roof water from this house then goes into the uh, storm sewers. So it's all removed from site. So for many homes that have water in their basements, the water that ends up causing trouble actually comes uh, from the roof of the home itself. So what surprised me today in this home is that uh, using a thermal camera I've actually discovered uh, a problem and I'm going to attempt to show you, uh, I'm not sure how it'll work out, but I'll try to show you the lens of the camera or the screen of the camera as I was traveling around the perimeter of the house just to give you a, a glimpse of how a thermal camera can reveal things that I probably would have missed otherwise. Uh, so I'll just step back. You can have a look here at the pattern on the floor uh, where the water has flooded out. It's an area about uh, 8 feet by 8 feet and uh, looking at the wall itself which appears to the eye to be uh, perfectly fine as you can see. I, there's nothing obvious here in the wall but on the thermal camera we can see there's a cone of coldness that rises up from this wet area uh, and then there's a line and if we follow the line upwards uh, it takes us to the source of the leak um, here we go up the wall up the wall and uh, you can see it's cold here has a very distinct dark line and if we come closer uh, I'll just take the thermal camera out of the way here now and put on my headlamp uh, if we look closely at the wall there is one little ripple here showing a tape seam that seems to be somewhat uh, swollen a water stain here uh, on the wall and uh, finally above this we have a drain. A drain coming down from the upper floor and there's a joint here and that joint uh, is where the moisture is leaking out and the wall is in perfect condition because the water is flowing behind the vapor barrier, the plastic barrier here and so the water is not actually damaging the wall, it's flowing inside the wall all the way down to the floor and of course across the floor. So this wall will be full of mold uh, it's going to have to be uh, opened up. Uh, the wall will have to be opened up. The carpet's going to have to be discarded. Uh, the area will have to be sanitized because it's sewage leak leakage here. And uh, so uh, using the thermal camera, we was, I was able to find this. Without the camera, I probably would have missed it because uh, the wall looks to be in perfect shape. The floor being a, a model carpet, uh, the staining that was there is just not really that visible. So there you go. Thermal cameras do work.